Hello everyone and welcome back to our class in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning and Finance. In the last video we've seen the multi-layer perceptron and we used it um, to do the following. If you skip back one slide, um, you can see that we um, trained a multi-layer perceptron in order to recognize um, handwritten digits. And as in this example, um, we were able, for example, to predict from this picture correctly that this was supposed to be a seven and um, it actually was a seven. So um, this is the trained models prediction. And we haven't talked about the accuracy and actually overfitting. And if we plot the history of the model um, over the different actually 50 epochs, you can see here in well, green or turquoise, um, the loss in accuracy for the validation set, and in orange, the um, loss in accuracy for the training set. And as you can see, the accuracy is actually extremely high. Where's my cursor? Here it says, okay. Um, it is actually quite high. And problem is, as you can see here, from the loss in the validation set, um, with more and more epochs um, that we use for training our multi-layer perceptron, um, the algorithm, the model doesn't generalize, doesn't generalize well to new data. So we can see that the loss increases enormously and linearly with every epoch, um, even though the accuracy in the training data set uh, is almost close to 100%. So we can see overfitting being a huge problem here, which is not surprising, um, given the fact that we have 200 and I think 204,000 parameters and uh, much less data observations. So actually for each data observation, we have more yeah. parameters um, and this um, obviously yields such a highly flexible model, but this is uh, causing the overfitting we can see on this um, plot. So it's obvious that um, when we look at the previous slide where we compare the loss and the accuracy uh, in the training and in the test data, that this first very simple multi-layer perceptron overfits the data. And what happens is the model ends up memorizing the training sample because we have more parameters than we actually have observations. So we could simply store all our observations in, in one or more parameters and thus it does not generalize well to previously unseen data. With the loss continuously decreasing on the training set, it starts increasing from epoch 10 on the validation set. So that's approximately 20% of the training sample um, that we randomly selected uh, via the validation split parameter um, in our model fitting. And as a consequence, the classification accuracy on the validation set does also not further increase. For the training set, it's close to 100%, but not for the validation set. Um, we have seen this here. So you can see the accuracy doesn't really increase anymore after this point in the validation set. And we cannot train the model much better for the training set, obviously. So a possible solution to overfitting in neural networks, uh, one possibility is regularization. Uh, and this can be done, for example, via dropout and early stopping. And we will be doing this in this example here and exemplifying how this uh, how these two procedures work. Dropout was proposed by Srivastava, Hinton, Kraszewski, Zutskiva and Zalakudinov in 2014. And it's a powerful regularization method that is applicable actually to a broad family of models. It's computationally inexpensive and it's frequently used in uh, the current literature. And what you do is Dropout trains an ensemble of sub-networks of a given neural network and therefore we have non-output units that are randomly removed from the network. And this is typically achieved by multiplying the outputs of the respective neurons with zero and for each mini-batch a different subsample of hidden units is used. And then we calculate the gradients and uh, we do back propagation through these networks um, as usual. Now, Early stopping as the second alternative for regularization of the neural network addresses the question of how long to train a neural network. Because we can see here that at some point, sorry, at some point, probably here, we should have stopped and said, okay, well, this is uh, enough 
the accuracy in the training um, sample will only increase slightly, but everything that follows now is um, an increase in the loss um, for the validation set. So we could have stopped earlier. That's what um, early stopping is all about. So too little training might lead to underfitting. If we have stopped, if we had stopped earlier, let's say after maybe five epochs or three epochs, um, and if we stop too late, we get overfitting. Um, and early stopping proposes a compromise by stopping training at the point when performance on the validation set starts to degrade. It's very simple, very effective, and widely used. Now we continue by adding a dropout layer to model one. The dropout rate specifying the percentage of neurons excluded per mini batch serves as a hyperparameter. And here we choose a dropout rate of 50%. So we um, estimate and fit model two, again with Keras, model sequential, um, and the pipe operator. Um, we have layer dense, 256 neurons, activation function is ReLU. Um, and then we also have the layer dropout, which is rate with 50%. And then the last layer with 10 um, response binary variables or 10 outputs. And we are using softmax as the activation. So we have three layers now. And this is the summary of our regularized model. Again, it's sequential with those three layers. Um, the dropout layer doesn't have any parameters. Um, so again, we get the same number of parameters as before. So it's not really about reducing the flexibility of the model. Um, just using maybe different data um, to fit the model. We compile this and fit the regularized model. So again, we are using cross entropy as a loss function, um, same optimizer as before. And to assess the accuracy, sorry, um, we use the accuracy. So this is what we do. History, we fit the model. X train, Y train, 50 epochs, batch size is 64, and the validation split is again 20% of our um, observations. Um, and this is the result. As you can see, um, as before, we have a drop in the loss at first, and it still increases for the validation set, but it doesn't increase like this. So actually this difference here and also this minimized difference between the accuracy in the training and in the validation set. These are the results of the regularization via um, a dropout. So that's the result. Now, accuracy in the validation set slightly increases with the um, number of epochs while the loss of uh, the validation set only slightly increases. So overfitting is not a major issue anymore. We can see that, yes, it still increases. It's not that the loss, um, okay, here's my cursor. It's not constant. It still increases slightly until epoch 50, but it's not a major issue as before. And while the accuracy of the regularized model, it's about 99% is lower in the training set compared to the original model, it is actually higher, 98.2% in the test set. So generalization performance has improved, and this is also reflected in a lower loss over the test set. So yes, it's um, a good way to regularize the neural network and to prevent it from overfitting. And in the next video, we'll have a look at a deep model.